project initially came about with the idea of celebrating kind of your average Joe that loves to do the things he's good at. I wanted to showcase Evan in the Wolf Guys as being passionate about what they do and don't necessarily have a lot of notoriety per se in the industry and then doing something with some super unique custom bikes and basically showcase something at the One Show which is a show that we all really love. How Wolf and Joe started, the story goes, it was based around kind of like a campfire. I mean, we'd go out to the desert and all skill levels of riding, we just kind of said, hey, when are we gonna get the Wolf Pack together? And later down the road, it was abbreviated to Wolf and yeah, it kind of just grew from there. There's six founders of, of Wolf Enduro, uh, myself, uh, Luke, Chaz, the Smith brothers, Mikey and Jake, uh, and Greg was our crew. My buddy Scott, who works at Answer Racing, contacted me about the concept that he had in mind. Got together and sketched up two different style Dakar rally bikes, a vintage style bike and a modern style bike. Seeing everything that you have to do can be kind of overwhelming with, you know, when you start to put the pieces on the bike and start to work on the custom parts and everything like that, uh, it really just keeps you motivated. That's the best part is just at the end seeing it all come together and seeing this amazing machine that you built with your hands. I, I, that for me, that's what I love about building motorcycles. and I saw the Y1, which I hadn't seen at all. Like, I was just blown away. It's so retro looking, but it's very modern. The white bike, we cut into 81, and pulled a lot of inspiration on that bike from the 1981 Yamaha Factory XT500 Dakar bikes that they ran back in the day. Black bike, we wound up calling the Ghost. It's made to mimic what a car rally bike would look, and you could actually run a rally on that bike and use all the navigation stuff as it should be used. The concept was really cool about building two custom bikes and then riding on the way to the show. I mean, you see all these builds there that people put so much time into and it was definitely one of the most nerve-wracking things to see the bikes get used and abused before we even got to the show. The first 24 hours were pretty uh, intense. In my head, I'm like, I got a dislocated shoulder, I'm just going to go to the hospital and pop back in. No worries, like, we'll be on the road tomorrow. Obviously that wasn't the case. Managed to break my right hand in several places and shattered my left collarbone. Scott had already um, taken off in the morning to go home and get assessed by the doctors and took this up with some um, freeze-dried uh, gourmet and I overwatered them way too much. Evan was like, what is this? This is just like, this is soup. This is breakfast soup. So I made him drink it. He liked it though, it was cool. Building up into the trip, part of the team got to go earlier. We were living the trip through them, through text messages and Instagram, and then the excitement was building day by day. We all wanted to be there as soon as possible to help out and be a part of it. The general plan for the guys excluding Evan and Keith who had left earlier was to leave on Tuesday to show up at Tillamook Wednesday ready to ride. So those guys just jumped in the RV and, and bombed all through the night. Going into Tillamook. 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 After driving for 19 hours straight, pulling up to Tillamook was a relief. What all the local guys are telling us is that this was the best weather that we could possibly have. It would just rain, it was nice and tacky. Seeing them rolling off the cart, already ridden and dirty, was just awesome. Moisture, snow, mud, you name it. I mean, we kind of had this vision in our head of what it is and what it could be. We got to basically experience all of that. The trails of Tillamook are something that I hope that I get experience again in my life, but it's basically a dream come true. 
The favorite part about riding Tillamook is the scenery. Um, it's hard to concentrate on the trail when you have just so much green, lush ferns and moss and everything and streams. It's unbelievable. At the end of the Tillamook ride, we came across this amazing bluff. Everybody kind of collected at the end there and it, and it really just kind of brought together the whole project and is an amazing kind of ending to the ride. That solidified the whole day. Everybody was just smiling through their helmets. It kind of puts it all into perspective of why we all ride motorcycles. We decided to just bring the bikes right to the show from the trail. We didn't even wash them or anything. There was nothing else there like that. Which I remember hearing multiple times throughout the weekend that people were like, I can't believe these bikes, you know, got ridden. It's so cool to see people's reaction to I think it's okay to do things that are a little bit different, and I think it's okay to highlight guys that are unexpected. Everybody has a story, it's just whether or not, you know, you want to get into it and you want to learn about it. And without, you know, people like us at Answer and Evan at Iron Cobras and the Wolf Dudes, like, it's good to kind of buck the system and, and do stuff that's unique. Um, and, you know, I'll continue to do that kind of stuff.